little more time to chew things over. Eric Bowling. There was a word from the 70s, stagflation. That meant you had low growth but high inflation. Is it possible that somebody like Honig, one of the, go the reserve presidents who's, who's very pessimistic about the future, he was against the rate lowering because he was worried about inflation. Is it possible that we could have both higher inflation and lower growth? Well, I think the Fed has pointed out that, that inflation is under control. Let's say inflation does start to increase. You're probably Peter laughing at I this. Think but, so, yeah. but, but let's sorry, say inflation is increasing. One of the caveats in stagflation, everyone talks about it when, when things like this come up, you have to have declining employment. It's, it's, in a, it's in an environment where people aren't working. They're not making more money and they're not spending. That's stagflation. This is not the case. We have a tight labor market, and that really is the caveat here that's going to keep us out of what I think, I think it's going to keep us out of a recession, Charles, is that type of labor market. Charles, do you like employment where it is right now, unemployment rate? And the Fed says it might uptick just a tenth of a percent. Absolutely. And I thought that probably was the best thing of the whole thing. You know, the fact that they can see out for the next couple of years is staying under 5 percent. I agree with Eric. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, employment is the key. You know, even for the recovery of the housing market and for everything else, uh, consumer spending, yeah, even when people's houses go down, if they have a job and their real wages are improving a little bit, they're still going to shop somewhat. The consumer's not going to fall off a cliff, not just yet, I don't think. But, Pat, it's sort of a good cop, bad cop here. I've got to point out some of the negatives. I mean, if, in fact, we have an economic slowdown and if we're not able to sell as much overseas as we used to be able to, you're going to have more, more unemployment, right? Well, you are going to have more unemployment, but I think this is, this is just something to be expected at this stage of the economic recovery. And when you consider the Fed lowering rates, they're not looking at the impact it's going to have in November and December. They're looking out into next year. And I actually was a little pessimistic when I saw they've lowered the rates and they're still only expecting that the growth is going to be under 2% for the upcoming year. That's a very, very modest growth rate, and it is a little risky for them. Peter, what do you think about the growth rate that they're projecting? Well, it's all nonsense. I mean, first of all, we're already in a recession. doesn't matter what the numbers okay. say. It's going to get worse. And inflation is already probably as bad as anything we had in the 1970s right now. And it's going to get worse. You hit but, the nail but, on the head, Peter, stagflation. recession is a contracting of we are, gross we, domestic product. We are contracting. But it's two just, quarters in a row. No, because the government is underestimating inflation. They're also padding the GDP. You know, if, if we calculated inflation in the 1970s using the same CPI today, the government would have reported 2 and 3 percent inflation throughout the entire decade how, of the 70s. How high will unemployment go, Peter? Well, I, I mean, the way the government measure it now, when, when people are not looking for work, they're not counted as unemployed. I mean, so I don't know how many people are already That's unemployed true, that, that, that are not being picked up. Peter, I love you, brother. I have a question for you. Do you pay your taxes? Yes. Do you pay more than you're supposed to? Probably not. Americans don't pay more than they're supposed to. Tax receipts are increasing year after year, quarter after quarter, not of because course. people are paying in advance. They're paying because they're making. Growth is here. Don't deny it. We're not in recession. Don't listen to Peter. We are not in a well, recession right by now. By the way, by the way, we, there is a very specific definition for recession. It's a definition that's, that's defined not only by two right. quarters, but a lot of under, other indices. There is an organization which decides when we are in a recession. So just by definition, unless, Peter, you want to create a whole new thing, which what is I'm something kind of lower but, growth, we're not the, in a recession. But the numbers well, are not also accurate. Out too about the numbers recessions. are wrong. The last two recessions we've had have been so short-lived, you know, about eight months each compared to historically when they've been as long as 30 months, that I think what we've had is a nation that can respond quickly to a recession, monetarily, you know, from the Fed and from the federal government. You know, that's something to really consider. I don't think we're going to a recession. I agree with Eric. But if we did, if that was the worst case scenario, I think we would snap you know, out of it that is, really that quickly. Is, that is part of the problem. Those recessions should have been allowed to be a lot more severe than they were. The Fed pushed off those problems by creating a lot of inflation. They blew up this housing bubble. Now we're going to have to suffer a far, far deeper recession because of what the Fed did in 2001 and 2002. Pat, there are people who say that the Fed mishandled certain things well, as far as the housing bubble was concerned, right. and that's why we see the problems that we see today. Yeah, I, I think that they're, they're looking at it with perfect hindsight. I think when you look at the Fed's actions, right? exactly, I think when you look at the Fed's action, you have to look at the environment in which they were operating. They were looking in, at a post-9-11 environment where we did not know what the outcome was going to be. We did not know if the consumer was going to pull back completely. So I think the Fed may have caused some of this problem, but it was really inadvertent in relationship to, they were trying to 
solve a different no, a different problem. I was one of the people Peter, who was Peter, warning Peter, about this. Peter, hold on, let Pat finish your point. I've got board. to tell you, I, I have a really hard, it's just me, I have a really hard time uh, with not using facts to support my opinions. Okay, hold on. We'll